Salutations, my dear subjects. It is I, Sevi. Rejoice, for I bring forth this wellspring of knowledge on the princess and her aviary companion, Oz. With my illuminating light, I embolden you to constitute a princess worthy of your prestigious personas. Anyway, yes, this is my updated guide on our favorite walking thesaurus, Fischl. And we're going to talk about her kit, playstyles, constellations, stats, artifacts, weapons, and team comps for both her sub-DPS and main DPS builds. Let's begin! Fischl, or more specifically Oz, is generally used as a sub-DPS, which is how I'd personally recommend her to be built. However, she can also be used as a physical main DPS, so I'll also discuss that as we go along, but our focus is largely on her strong sub-DPS role. As an off-field DPS, Oz does most of the work. When you cast her skill, whether by pressing or holding to manually position, Fischl summons Oz to deal initial electro damage in a small area, and once he's active, he fires electro damage bolts every second. Do make sure that there's a clear path for those bolts as they can be blocked by structures. He also generates electro particles over time by hitting enemies, which provides a constant source of energy. If you need to reposition him to where Fischl is, you can do so by pressing the skill. The most important thing to know about summoning Oz is that he snapshots. To summarize, whatever Fischl's stats are at the time of summoning Oz is what his damage calculation will be based on. This means that ideally Fischl has all the relevant buffs before summoning Oz. However, re-summoning Oz while he's already active also re-snapshots Fischl stats. This mechanic can also work to your advantage if Fischl gets a buff in the middle. At C0, this skill lasts for 10 seconds and has a whopping cooldown of 25 seconds. The cooldown starts when you cast it though, so that's a potential 15 second downtime for Oz. However, this is where the burst comes in to help. When you activate Fischl's burst, she enters into her Oz-like form, gliding around the field and dealing electro damage once to each enemy you come into contact with. At the end of this duration, or if you switch Fischl out prematurely, it summons Oz with the same properties as the skill version. Juggling your burst and skill uptime to re-summon Oz is the key to achieve maximum uptime on him. If the skill is on cooldown, summon Oz with a burst and vice versa. On Spiral Abyss, I usually use the burst first to summon Oz. That way, I regenerate Fischl's energy while Oz is on the field, and then when he expires, I use my skill to summon him again, and when he expires again, the burst should be ready by that time. Then just repeat. However, Fischl can take damage while she's moving around, so don't be too complacent. Fischl has Ascension passive talents that further add to what Oz can do. The first passive requires you to hit Oz with a fully charged shot from Fischl, which makes him deal electro damage to a nearby enemy. The concept and interaction is a fun idea, but in practical use, this takes long to set up and the damage payoff is bad, resulting in a significant DPS loss. The second passive is more useful though. It lets Oz deal damage when the active character triggers electro-related reactions and this damage can proc every half second. Since Fischl is almost always put in reaction teams anyway, this passive gets a lot of use. So when you have all these mechanics interacting together, it makes up for a very strong sub DPS unit. It also makes you wonder who's the real star here, Fischl or Oz? As for her normal attacks, they're only relevant if you plan on making her an on-field DPS. I like that the animations are fast, and if you factor in certain constellations and team buffs, her machine gun-like attacks can hit pretty hard. If you want to get more technical, there are certain animation cancelling patterns to optimize Fischl's normal attack DPS, such as 2 normals then cancel or 4 normals then cancel. This involves entering and exiting the aimed shot mode to rapidly cancel her animation and restart it. PC users have an easier time doing this than mobile players for obvious reasons. So which talents should you prioritize? For sub DPS Fischl, get her skill talent level as high as possible, because that's where Oz's damage scaling comes from, whether summoned from Fischl's skill or burst. As for her burst, level it up to at least 6. You can leave the normal attacks unleveled. But if she's your main DPS, level up her normal attacks alongside her skill. Now let's look at her constellations and how they improve her sub DPS roles. C1 lets Oz deal damage along with Fischl's normal attacks, but only when he's not on the field. This damage is counted as physical damage and can crit. It's also considered as normal attack damage, so effects like Yunjin's normal attack buff will affect it. This constellation is beneficial for a physical DPS machine gun Fischl build, and it's like having a built-in Crescent Pike effect. But if you're running her as an off-field DPS, it's practically useless. 
C2 adds damage to when you summon Oz and it increases the AoE of that damage. To emphasize, it doesn't increase Oz's damage over time, only the initial damage when you summon him. To take advantage of this, you have to summon Oz near the enemies, which may or may not be feasible depending on the situation. C3 increases her skill level by 3, translating to more Oz DPS, which is a great constellation since she's mostly used for Oz anyway. C4 adds a separate instance of attack scaling electro damage to her burst. This damage is also considered as burst damage and can crit, basically a decent damage boost to her burst. It also heals Fischl a bit. C5 increases her burst level by 3. This really only serves as the final stepping stone to her broken constellation. C6 is where Fischl gets crazy. On top of adding Oz's duration, he now attacks alongside the active character's attacks, and there is no limit to his attack speed, so no matter how fast you attack, Oz attacks too. So it's better if your active character also has fast attacks like Child, Yoimiya, or Physical Zhongli. This is clearly her best constellation as it unlocks a large part of her damage potential once activated. So which stats should you prioritize? For her circlet, get crit rate or damage depending on what you need to supplement. Hit at least a 50 to 100 ratio. A temporary attack percent circlet will also work. For the goblet, it's either electro damage or physical damage depending on how you're building her, or temporarily attack percent. Then for the sands, attack percent all the way. And for substats, the usual crit, attack, and energy recharge are welcome. For energy recharge, you don't need that much. 120 to 130 ER should be enough to get full uptime on Oz, but even that can go lower depending on your party's energy generation. Experiment to see how your Fischl does. If you often find her burst fully charged before its cooldown, feel free to reallocate her ER towards offensive stats. The key thing to remember with Fischl is to prioritize stats over set. But if you're looking to see which set bonuses can help Fischl, here's what you can aim for. When it comes to Electro Sub DPS Fischl, for low AR artifacts, you're looking for offensive sets. The resolution of Sojourner, Braveheart, and Berserker sets take care of your damage stats. The Gambler set is good for buffing Oz damage, and a full Instructor set is also a viable option for Taser teams. For higher AR, the go to combo is the 2 piece Thundering Fury and 2 piece Glad Shimanawa, or a cheaper build could go for 2 piece Glad and 2 piece Shimanawa altogether. These are safe, resin efficient combos that generally work for any team comp she's in. As for full sets, there are two options. First is the 4-piece Thunder Soother set, but this is only really feasible if you run her with a taser comp as the electro charge reaction keeps the electro aura on enemies or on a mono electro team. It will generally outperform the 2-piece combos in those cases. The second is the 4-piece tenacity of the Millilith set. The benefit is that this gives your team a consistent attack and shield strength bonus. The attack buff is useful, and the shield strength not really if you don't have shields anyway. This takes away from Fischl's own damage potential. While she also gets the attack buff, oftentimes you'll have to resummon Oz to snapshot that attack buff so it slows down your rotations. And is it worth it to farm the domain only for this set? The likely scenario is getting it incidentally while farming for someone else. However, even if a tenacity build hurts Fischl's own damage, it greatly benefits teams that revolve around a hyper carry unit, such as Shao or Razor. Since most of the team's damage comes from the hyper carry, they can more than compensate for Fischl's own damage loss, especially with enemy mobs. More so, Fischl's damage is largely single target, whereas those hyper carries are AoE DPSs. This is also true for certain Sucrose Taser teams where every unit in that team outputs damage, thereby benefiting from that attack buff. Why not 4-piece Thundering Fury? 1. Because Fischl isn't the one reliably proccing the reactions, and 2. Because it requires the holder to be on-field for the cooldown reduction to work, which contradicts Fischl's off-field playstyle. Now for her physical DPS role. For low AR players, it's the same offensive sets mentioned before, but you can also add the martial artist set for buffing her normal attacks. For high AR players, the 4-piece Pale Flame is the best choice since it gives the highest damage ceiling, and Fischl can easily keep the 4-piece effect up thanks to Oz. There's the concern of the 4-piece Pale Flame disabling her C1 effect since Oz needs to be on the field to proc the Pale Flame effect. In physical Fischl teams, she'll most likely be the only Electro there so it's unavoidable to have to use Oz for superconduct reasons. 
So with C1, it looks something like this. Start your rotation by summoning Oz. Cycle your team setup and rotations to support Fischl, at which point you should have your cryo unit proccing Superconduct alongside Oz. Then when this duration ends, Superconduct should still be active, and C1 will be activated during Fischl's DPS window. But again, like with other 4 pieces before, it's an expensive set to farm. And other combos of Pale Flame, Bloodstained, Glad, or Shimanawa are convenient, non-conditional buffs and more resin-efficient farming goals. Now what about the weapons? Let's start with the 3-star options. The best main DPS bow, I'd say, would be the Slingshot. Despite its low base attack, the crit rate and damage bonus buff it gives is massive. The Sharpshooter's Oath and Messenger are the runner-ups, but the crit damage it gives doesn't compare to the crit value of the Slingshot, and their effects are dependent on hitting weak spots, which is more conditional. But these are all possible off-field DPS options too. For free-to-play 4-star options, the Prototype Crescent, Compound Bow, and Hamayumi are all good options, each having their own playstyle benefits. The Prototype Crescent is the all-around bow, viable for either an on-field or off-field playstyle, since it's a huge attack stat stick that plays to Fischl's mixed damage capabilities. However, this needs good aim to get the weak point attack buff, and you'd have to be conscious of snapshotting Oz. For main DPS Fischl, the Compound Bow is an easy choice for its physical damage, attack, and speed buffs. Hamayumi is also a viable option, and the attack substat boosts Oz a bit more than the Compound Bow's attack buff. But total damage-wise, they're pretty close. Though, Hamayumi incentivizes you to not use your burst, meaning more downtime for Oz. I think you ought to have C1 Fischl for Hamayumi, so at least Oz's downtime is compensated by Hamayumi also buffing the extra C1 attacks. Then for 4-star gacha options, the best sub-DPS weapons are Stringless and Alley Hunter. These are perfect for buffing her off-field damage. Her best physical DPS weapons are the Rust and the Mitternacht Waltz. At equal refinements, the Rust outputs more normal attack damage, but the Waltz gives more equalized damage output for Fischl's normal attacks and Oz's skill damage. The Battle Pass Reward Viridescent Hunt is an option that makes building her crit stats easier, so it's not a must-have over the other gacha 4-stars if you have one of them already. But the Viridescent Hunt offers crowd control utility that is useful in certain scenarios like helping Eula's burst hit mobs or grouping in Sucrose Taser teams. Then for the 5-star weapon, whether you're using her as a sub or main DPS, you can't go wrong with the Polar Star, Skyward Harp, Thundering Pulse, or Amos Bow. The Polar Star has conditions you need to play around with, and the Thundering Pulse and Skyward Harp give more utility for physical DPS Fischl, but they're all decent stat sticks alongside Amos Bow for an Oz build. The Elegy for the End is also viable on a sub-DPS support Fischl. Proccing the effect is easy, and the team-wide EM and attack buff are pretty good particularly for Fischl's taser teams. What about team comps? As a sub-DPS, Fischl is very flexible and at the very least provides good off-field damage in whatever team she's in, while also functioning as a good battery for fellow Electro teammates. Of course, she shines in certain team comps. Fischl is a superb member in Electro Charge teams involving Hydro and Emo teammates. Your Hydro options can be Child, Kokomi, or Sing Cho. Child and Kokomi are also great carries for C6 Fischl. Then you can include Beidou, Keqing, or Yae Miko as another Electro unit for triggering Electro Resonance, which is a huge help for energy generation, plus additional Electro damage and application. For the animal unit, Sucrose is easily the best choice thanks to her EM sharing utility, consistent swirling, resistance shredding, and being a great on-field driver. Other animal support units can work too, but Sucrose is the top choice. One recently popularized reaction team that Fischl works exceptionally well in is the Sukokomon team, composed of Sucrose, Fischl, Kokomi, and Shangling. Overload teams are also an option with Fischl, paired with pyro units like Yoimiya, Klee, or Diluc. Fischl has the benefit of supplementing Yoimiya's single target focused playstyle by triggering AoE overload damage. Alternatively, Fischl's also great in a physical team. For instance, pairing her with cryo physical DPSs like Eula, Rosaria, or Kaya is convenient, as you already have a reliable superconduct combo available. Other non cryo physical DPSs like Zhongli or Xinyan are good options, as long as you have another cryo unit to trigger superconduct. And for Razor teams, Fischl is a strong niche member, providing electro resonance and a reliable source of electro particles, since Razor cannot produce particles in his burst state. When it comes to Fischl being a physical DPS, the first necessity is of course a cryo support for Superconduct. 
Kaya, Rosaria, or Diona come to mind. Then there's Yunjin, who skyrockets Fischl's normal attack and C1 damage. If you have a Yunjin to buff your main DPS Fischl, you get much more physical damage by exploiting Fischl C1 mechanic with Oz off the field, since that gets buffed by Yunjin too. It will use up Yunjin's trigger quota relatively fast though, so once that's finished, you can return Oz to the field. Other buffers like Bennett and physical resistance shredders like Rosaria and Sinyan are also good teammates. If you have a slot left, go for a shielder or healer. But everyone, that's going to be it for this updated official guide. She really is a pretty easy unit to use, and I hope you decide to build her bird for access to more comps. Let me know in the comments how you like to comp Fischl, or if you just got her, I would love to know. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin guides and content. I yearn to cross paths with your virtual personage once more. Alas and farewell.